Hey everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tube. Welcome back. If this is your... I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Your 11th DC Stargirl Season 2 episode review. Reaching the end, guys. It's, 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 it's bittersweet. It's, it's, it's very bittersweet to be um, reaching this point in the... Um, in the run. Uh, it, it, it actually is. Um, I've been... Um, I've been enjoying the season so far. I, I don't know quite yet if I have to rank it against the first season yet. Um, I will say it's it's pretty close in certain areas, but we'll see how the last few episodes go. Because this week on Stargirl, they did not take my prediction from last week too hard. Um, because it would have been awesome, but I understand writers know how to do things better than me. Uh, what we got this week was a good episode. It, it delves us into... A new dimension of the uh, the DC multiverse, and I was okay by it. It was fair. I, I got a little confused at a couple parts, but I, honestly, this does definitely like continue the pace we're going in order to, to kind of like put an end to the Eclipso threat for the season. And I'm just gonna say after this episode, they got a lot of ground to cover in the next two hours. So, well, the next two episodes. So hopefully, um, everything will perfectly make sense as we wrap it up when we come back in early November. Well, the end. I mean, we're still on next week, but you know what I mean by that. You know what I mean. Uh, so, with that being said, let's go for the Butcher Recap and talk about this week's episode of Stargirl. So, we begin with a our one of our brief moments into the regular world. Well, not really brief, but more like not less, not frequently enough. Um, Pat and Jenny return um, back to the Whitmore Dugan household while um, Beth, Barbara, and uh, Mike are still up waiting for their return. And I will say this. This scene was pretty really, was really damn good. Everyone, like, was very believable in terms of Courtney being gone. And uh, just seeing the, the, the reaction of, you know, uh, Barbara going directly to, um, to Pat's arms when, you know... The staff is there, but Courtney's not the one holding it. It's 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 Jenny, and of course Mike's still like bonding with his family. He he's very much like sympathetic to them and hugs with them while you know Beth just looks on, you know, with dismay that you know everything's really falling apart. You know, at least in her point right now, Yolanda quit the team, Rick's in jail, and Courtney's now stuck to the Shadowlands. So it, it's been a very it's been a very rough time for Beth. Um, and I will say this: I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit more. I was very Personally, this is just like a, a me thing. This isn't like a, this is, I'm not criticizing the episode. I'm just saying this is a personally me thing. It would have been awesome if this was the last we've seen of them till the next episode where this entire episode would have been in the Shadowlands and then figuring out a way to get back. And then we, we have next episode having everyone else join forces to get ready for the Eclipse of Fred and have everyone out. That was kind of my prediction for last week to how the last three were going to go. It wasn't the case, but... Um, that's why I still think it would have been a much better idea for them to have just did an entire Shadowlands episode, do more of Dr. Midnighter's backstory, um, while he's doing, the, while he's been tra trapped there and then have all the, the, the regular world stuff happen when, um, episode 12 rolls around and just having them all ready for Courtney's return. But, um, that wasn't the case here, but, um, regardless, they, they, they still did a pretty fine job. Um, Courtney wakes up in the middle of Blue Valley. Well, we'll call the Shadow Blue Valley. Um, every, it's basically the same thing, except everyone's just kind of creepy nice, and it's all black and white, which was, you know, interesting. Of course, obviously, that's, like, kind of, like, the the generic way to, like, kind of tell, like, this is the negative world, or just, like, this is the, um, the opposite side of things, um, more or less. Um, Courtney heads over to the, um, the diner, which I instantly found, like, is this how we're gonna get Yolanda and Rick back to, like, civilian mode, just having them be, like, complete opposites of themselves, but no, they're not even in this episode. Uh, but who, who does return in this episode is the, uh, the magicians from season one. Um, remember those guys, they were kind of like a loose part of the ISA, but then they were killed off very early on in season one. Um, yes. Even the kid. Yes. Oh yeah. Now I remember. Yeah. It was, I, I forgot the whole twist in episode three was, which I found to be kind of, now that I'm remembering yet, yeah, episode three's twist was when icicle actually killed, the son of one of his um, ISA friends, and as even even when the magician decided, you know what, I'm done with this life, I'm leaving. Screw your plans, and Icicle just killed the whole family. I found that to be pretty pretty br brutal. Seeing the family here again was kind of 
okay. I mean, them being here kind of just solidifies that, yeah, this is kind of like a real messed up version of the, the real world. And also getting that season one flashback to the first episode where we see the, magi- the magician in action. It was nice to see them again. It was nice to see them again, but it was also definitely just to sell the point that this is not the same world that Courtney came from. This isn't really. And who comes to save her is none other than Cindy herself. Oh, no, not yet. They, they head over to the... She head over to the high school where she sees the Dragon King again. Still in his awesome voice. Design is pretty... Debatable. Um, but when she's attacked by him, um, she's immediately saved by Cindy, who, as we remember, went through the exact same portal thing from um, the, from episode six this season. So she's been alive, but she's been here for a little a little bit of time, and she's still pissed at Courtney for a little bit. But then she just tells her the reality of their situation that this is the Shadowlands, where basically you're basically the worst in people, the worst in the world is basically the energies manifested here. So basically, everything you see in this world is meant to be the most aggressive, the most um, cruelest, the most uh, negative thing you'll see ever possible because this is just what the lands are made of. There's no there's no light, there's no hope, there's nothing in this world. So um, even though you might see some things, it's not 100% meant to be um, what it's supposed to represent. For example, Courtney gets a sort of a, a I don't even know what to call it technically, but she's sent to like kind of like a figment of her, of what when... Um, she was a baby or when she was a kid and her mom was still working the, those two jobs before she met Pat and then they fell in love and they managed to move into a bigger house. <laughs> One of the things that um, this scene indicates is like the negativity, like it's more of emphasized like and um, what was it? Um, amplified negativity where Barbara had a career choice, had a career path in life. Then she got pregnant with Courtney and then the, the whole plans got sidetracked because she had to take care of the kids because the dad wasn't around. And, She's feeling the negativity is amplified because, you know, she's kind of, you know, angry at the fact that Courtney only cares about her dad. Like, where's dad? Where is he? Where is he? He's so cool. And Barbara's, meanwhile, working two jobs, you know, struggling with the bills, fall, falling behind on it. And all Courtney can care about is her dad, her deadbeat dad, which I honestly do get. I get that from that point. But obviously, this is just a negativity amplification point. So she's like really basically saying, like, I, you ruined my life. And while the real Courtney is like taking this in, Cindy's is telling her it's not 100% the real thing. It, it isn't. It's just like, this is just all the bad things happening at once. So don't worry about it that much. Um, and then at one point, um, Cindy's own negativity, uh, her own like um, despair moments start coming in when the uh, when she sees her mom um, from a distance coming over and Cindy just tells her to go away. But the some of the Dragon King soldiers um, take her away as well. Courtney tries to follow her, follow her and ends up being in like a... One in that similar shadow, um, shadow pathways or shadow or, or shadow ways that um, Doctor Midnighter was in when we saw him earlier this season, and eventually Courtney does get pulled back into a version of Pat and Starman's um, garage, but the real Doctor Midnighter is there to, that that pulled her back, and he explains that yeah, so in the Shadowlands, what you saw before is the is the real, um, the real look of the Shadowland. Basically nothing. You just see, you just see darkness everywhere. Um, and, you know, your subconscious creates these things to kind of like ease your mind a little bit. But of course, obviously, the, the darkness in the world is, you know, tampering it, causing it to to um, imagine these very darker versions of human beings you've seen before in your world. The only reason why Dr. Midnighter kind of feels like okay-ish, even though he's been stuck there for decade, for almost a decade, is the fact he has his goggles. And his goggles, similar to what we said about Eclipse, so tells him the truth. So all he's been seeing was, well, at first he probably was seeing the visions, but then when he put on his goggles, he realized it's just shadows. Which I kind of do feel bad, like, as yeah, yeah, he did say time works differently in this world, so even though he's been there for almost 10 years, or more than 10 years, he hasn't aged muchly at all, so... Um, I do feel bad for him, though, because, like, just imagine just walking around there what feels like years, not having any sort of hope on when um, things will eventually get fixed. It's kind of scary. I'll, I'll give it that. Uh, we'll come back over to the other side of things. So, um, everyone's mourning. Everyone just thinks Courtney's dead, and now they're really screwed with their fight with Eclipse. So, since their only real hope is now, sadly, gone forever. Um, Cindy's blaming her. No, Jenny's blaming herself because... She thinks that she could have had a chance and, you know, she had, she could have tried something more, but 
everyone just puts her, puts her at ease. Like, it's not your fault. Like, you know, it really isn't. Uh, but before she's able to get to do her kind of her guild shaming trip, um, Beth gets a contact from Doctor Midnight, letting him, uh, letting her know and everyone else know that Courtney's alive. They're just all trapped trapped in the Shadow Realm and the Shadow Land, and they need to get out. So now that they know this, they got to realize what do we do? How do we get them out? And um, I believe I don't know what came first. I think yeah. So it, the key is the shade again. So apparently, this is the shade can. St- technically send people to the Shadowlands, he kind of has the power to get them back out. Uh, but since Shade literally was the one who betrayed them like less than a few hours ago, I don't know how entirely set he's going to be with that plan. Like, hey, you screwed over my daughter and my old friend. You, I want them back. Um, I really don't... We don't they don't know how it's going to go, but they first they need to find the Shade. And Cindy's, Cindy's key role here is that her ring is very sensitive to darkness. So there's a possibility that she can use her ring to kind of give them a GPS location of the shade somewhere in town, which they do. And once again, Pat doing his one of his own mentorship advices where he just tells Courtney to relax, I'm cal- um, not Courtney, Cindy to relax, Jenny to relax, calm, focus on the task at hand. And she manages to do it. He's in an old movie theater in town, which they go to, they, 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 they head over there and they find him watching an old movie and, he didn't really get that far. Like, honestly, if, he, if it were me, I would have immediately escaped. Like, fuck the cliff, so you're all screwed. I'll, I'll find some nice deserted island to spend the rest of my days. But no, he's still there. So not 100%, though. Even when he said, like, oh, I recovered my powers. I'm back to normal. He doesn't seem like that. He, he seems a little bit still weakened. It could just be because he's been, he was without his powers for so long that it's taking him a while to recover, recover back. And even though Pat and Barbara has no powers right now, they have no sort of ability to actually combat this guy. They're still basically like up in his face like, look, you caused this shit, you're going to fix this shit. We want Courtney back. So you're going to open the damn door to the Shadowlands. Otherwise, I don't know. But once again, it's Barbara's, you know, looking like her sister to kind of like woo him over to uh, let let him open the gate. Which, I'll say that this is, this is kind of a, just a, a rush ahead from the season three predictions video coming out um, when the season's over. I really hope next season Barbara has no sort of con- emotional connection to the villains. I, I, I don't like that anymore. It, it's gotten old. The icicle fascination was just unnecessary. It was like kind of like the only one of the only down spots I had for last season. This isn't that bad where the shade kind of just views him, views her as a sister. But I'm like, okay, come on. Come on. If we're going to say next season's villains, like, oh, you look like my future daughter. I'm like, stop. Stop. Let, let, let's move on. Just stop. Um, the shade opens the door, and this is around the time Courtney and Doctor Midnight um, wrap, wraps up the car and looks through the looks through the wall, which is now conveying to the real world's movie theater. And at first, um, they're ready to jump, get over there, and you know, kind of like get back to it. But Courtney doesn't want to leave Cindy behind, so she decides to w- withhold from crossing the portal and and goes to find Cindy. But when she crosses through a door, which she thinks Cindy is, she actually runs into Eclipso. Well, the child form, at least. Whether or not this is the real Eclipso, which I do think it is the real Eclipso. It's just that the whole, like, the mind manifestation kind of, like, it's a little bit iffy in my book. So, like, is this manifest? Is this uh, Eclipso or is this just Courtney's manifestation of Eclipso? Um, I really don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Courtney tries to get away a couple times, but then she ends up just, you know, getting stopped by Eclipso. And it kind of does feel like it is the real Eclipso because he is being very direct to her and saying, like, you know, everything I've already done to your family and friends, even if you get out of this, it's not going to be the same. Like, it, there's just been so many cracks. And he's got a point. He's really... He, this is not... Like, whatever happens in the next two episodes is not going to make up for everything that's happened this season. All the trauma they've, they, they've felt is going to be is going to be felt in season three. So, uh, I will give him that. That he's, like, setting up an emotional game for season three itself. But... Um, the thing eventually is Eclipso does let up and does leave Courtney alone. So, he goes after Cindy... Uh, who is in the middle of a Dragon King experiment in action, which is a look into what her life was. I'm assuming, you know, when she was growing up, just all the experiments to kind of make her the perfect weapon, the perfect soldier. Um, However, after he he, um, finishes the Dragon King, well, the imagination of the Dragon King, um, Courtney shows up, and they're about to engage in battle, but Dr. Midnighter shows up and lets her know that, listen, everything here is fake. You're not fighting... The Dragon King. It's just a figment of your imagination, of your subconscious. 
if you don't pay attention to it, I sat back to back. Um, if you don't pay attention to it, it has no power. It'll just go away, which thankfully does work. And also, this was very one of the only times where like, okay, I'm very thankful Dragon King, which is, was a VO at the end of the day, because it would have really sucked if like he just came in for some monologue and then had no action scenes. Um, that would have been disappointing, similar to how they did um, Icicle, which is just like he was just you're just popping in for a day, saying some lines, and then turning out you're just a, a figment of imagination. That that that. Thankfully, that that was. Um, that happened. Um, but before they're able to, to really get away, um, Cindy witnesses once again the um, the time where she kills her mom when she was a kid. And this time was a little bit more poignant going to close you since, again, it's still debatable whether or not this is the actual uh, mother for Cindy. But she's still like communicating like, look, I love you still no matter what you did to me. Don't worry about any guilt you have. You know, it was an accident. So um, you're my daughter. I'm always going to love you. So that was, that was sweet and gave Cindy enough push to like, Go with Courtney and um, Doctor Midnight are out of there, which they head back over, and in the in the ve in the most slowest way possible to cross over the border, they see a shade is like reaching his limit, and then they're just casually slowly crossing through the portal one at a time. I know that was just meant to like emphasize the point, like this is a big victory for them, especially for Doctor Midnight, or that they're out of it. But I'm like, you could have done that a little faster. You, you really could have. You could have done the traditional, we all jump jump in midair and land on the ground to signify we, we just did a cool thing. Um, so, uh, Courtney's back. Uh, Dr. Midnight is finally back in the real world. Thank God. Um, even Pat gives him, like, a big old hug. And, like, which is cool. This is, like, a really cool scene. Because, like, it seems like every season, um, all that... Um, all that Pat's been doing is like he hugged his old night buddy from like you know when he had the uh, his last team before the JSA, and now he's hugging Doctor Midnighter. It's like, you know, all these cool stuffs coming back to him, and like uh, it does definitely. It, it it was pretty cool to see. It was it was nice to see. Um, Sandy crosses for at last, and turns out the shade's gonna die. Um, for what reason? Probably over exhaustion, which is probably. Honestly, I will say that as much as I like the shade as a character, as with his voice and everything, I was kind of, I was kind of bummed. This is the way you you write him out, like you know, you ju he just dies of exhaustion. Sorry about that. So, <clears throat> cutting back to it. Anyway, um, this right now I'm gonna have to hurry this up because I have no idea how much space I have left because I've recorded so many episodes this past weekend that I, I lost track. Um, so yeah, shade dies, and um, I'm bummed out because um, that's the way you do him, like a very powerful friend and. Obviously, I get it. You humanize them because they they just added in the line of like, oh, I was really friends with Doctor Midnighter for at some point, and you know, I accidentally forgot him in the Shadowlands. And I'm just like, okay. That, I mean, obviously, they mentioned hints of it before, but like, it would have been a little bit more cooler to like add a little bit more than that, just to like and not drop it here, so that you could ca call the Shades Act like you know his final thing to do was a good thing, which I'm like, okay, I guess, but like, I again. My opinion of the matter. So he dies, um, and then now everyone's like, "Okay, he's gone." We feel kind of empty about it because like it's not a victory, but it's not a it's not a hundred percent a loss for us. Uh, but then Cindy turn um, stops the um, the morning and tells them, "Okay, you guys ready to finally kill Eclipso?" And that's where the episode ends. <laughs> um, so for me, yeah, um, I think this was just a a subpar good episode of the sh of of Star Girl. Um, I again, I was. I'm not trying to let my expectations take over to what the episode presented. I'm just saying that I would have found like much of a cooler concept. Like let's explore the shadow realms a little bit longer. Well, a little bit more. Cause like, yeah, the, the idea of like it being this negative space could have opened up. Like this would have been the perfect episode to bring back icicle. This would have been it. Um, obviously of course it would have made no sense. Cause like you'll, cause uh, Mike had that, that attributes um, same with, with um, with Barbara, so that would make a hundred percent sense since it was Courtney the one going through. I'm just saying, like, if you were going to use Icicle for some reason, this would have been the episode to put him in. Not you know the where during um, Eclipse's um, psychological attack on Barbara. That's just my opinion, so to speak. I'm not really um, faulting it. I'm just saying like there was a lot of potential here, and they did some of it. They explored the concept. I just sadly don't think we're ever going to go back to the Shadowlands again because. If Eclipso and the Shade were the only two people that can access it, and Eclipso presumably will be gone by the end of the season, we'll see how the finale goes. But um, I'm just saying, like that likelihood is just not—it's not popping in my head pr properly, 100% in my opinion. Um, but regardless of that, um, I still 
felt this was a good episode. I really did. It, it was kind of like a good, you know, psychological trip for them to kind of like figure process their emotions, their feelings and kind of figure out, you know, what's really at play here and what, you know, how will they now use this newfound experience when they go back to actually resume and finish their fight with Eclipso, um, which will all be very fascinating to see. Um, again, because now Cindy seems, seemingly is now teaming up with them, which will be an interesting concept considering the fact that last season she was just trying to kill them. Now she has no choice but to team up with them. It'll be interesting. It'll, it'll very much be interesting, but we'll see how it goes on next week. But overall for this week, it was okay at the end. It was still good, but it was just okay at the at the end of the bargain. So I'm going to give this episode one and a half thumbs up. I still enjoyed it. I still liked it, but just saying, you know, there was a couple of criticism points I had during I forgot. Uh, but we'll never forget, we'll never forget you, Shade. We, we will never will. Uh, but I believe that's going to do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action X, reviewing every episode in the second season of Stargirl. Um, if you want to know what we're doing normally on What's the Two, besides our Stargirl reviews, um, tomorrow we're going to be doing our Turner and Hooch season one review because once, once in a while we do random season reviews on shows that I'm watching because I want to. So that's out tomorrow. Um, then, then normally on Friday mornings we'll be, we'll be doing every Doom Patrol season three episode reviewed um, after a brand new episode on Thursdays on HBO Max. Uh, we're also doing Nancy Drew season three episode reviews each and every Saturday mornings after a brand new episode on Friday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app. We're also doing Rookie Season 4 episode reviews each and every Monday mornings normally after a brand new episode on, where are we, um, every Sunday nights on ABC or on Hulu the next day, but the Rookie is off the air next week. I believe we're slotting in something else next week. I have to double check the schedule. I'm pretty sure we are. I, I think I know what it was. No, no, that's off. That's after Holloway. Never mind. I, something's in the schedule next week. Oh no, wait, no, 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 I'm wrong, I'm wrong, never mind, I, I'm wrong about that, I, I know what exactly is about to pop up. Um, we're also doing Heels reviews each and every Tuesday mornings after a brand new episode on Sunday nights on Stars. Um, next week is our Season 1 review, so that will end off our Heels run of it for now. Um, and also next week we're starting up our Walker Season 2 episode reviews, which is going to complicate the schedule for a little bit, but that will be next week's conversational point, so don't worry about that for now. But if you don't care about Star Girl, you're in luck. We'll be back next week for the next episode review. Um, just to remind you again, um, on the first Wednesday of November is the season finale for season two. Um, so that'll be business as usual till then. Then the next week we'll be doing the season two review, non-spoilers, with a spoiler minute. And then afterwards, the next week, we will be having our season three predictions video when the show returns in 2022. Um, and that will wrap up our Star Girl um, content for for another year. You know, um, this would be the point where, like, um, every time I say, like, we're about to wrap it up and hopefully we'll be back next year doing the exact same journey again. Um, I always remember um, I saw the behind the scenes, fe the featurettes for uh, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, if anyone remembers that movie. And I was I was watching, I was uh, towards the end and the director was just saying, like, OK, that's the end of two. You know, now we're off the post. We're heading back to the States. We're going to finish off the, the end of the movie, get it ready for its um, summer release. And hopefully by this time next year, we'll be back shooting number three. I'm just thinking to myself, I feel so sorry for him that they never got to shoot a three, but I'm like, at the same time, like, the way that they carried him on, he was kind of like in this wheelchair, and it was like, he, he's not disabled, he was, he was just, he was just like, you know, being, you know, lifted back to his trailer, but like, that would have been cool, like, like, okay, we're done, George pulled me away, and you know, that's kind of how we, how we would end things. I'll ask him if he ever comes over to do that, I'll ask him. Um, but if you're unaware, everyone, this has been What's in the Tube from ActionX. Please subscribe to ActionX on YouTube.com slash ActionX videos. Like, viewers, share this review if you want to, but it helps us get us out there to other members of the Star Girls out there. Helps us beat up that YouTube algorithm that hates me ever so much in life, and as well as sharings for free here on the interwebs. Uh, please also um, ring that bell for notification when our next Star Girl review is live, which is normally each and every Wednesday morning. And make sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates we will have for the channel, uh, which is going to be a pretty crazy one since um, next week is like our very crazy week with the schedule since Walker is going to come in and like really shake things up. Um, but that'll be next week's problem. Next week's problem. Right now I'm just after I, I only have two more review, reviews to record this week, but after that I'm on, I'm on birthday mode. I'm on vacation mode for a little bit. So we'll get to that. Um, but again, um, until then for all you star girls out there, I'll see y'all next week, but until then stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.